people can sit there and tell you, hey, you know what you got yourself into. You knew you were going to war because we joined in 2003. Yeah, we could believe that all day long, but at the end of the day, you really didn't know what the hell that meant. Unless you had family that was there, you had friends that were there. Little did I know, you know, 15 years later, some of those bonds I made out there would still be my best friends today. What's going on guys? Time for another episode of Behind the Uniforms. Say hello to Kelly. Hi guys, how you doing? Give me some background. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I spent just over 12 years, served all around the world. I'm currently employed at Soldier Solutions and Starbucks and going to school full time. <laughs> Soldier Solutions and Starbucks. Mm -hmm. It's like oxymorons. That's like America and like anti-America, <laughs> no? I mean, I will not go into a Starbucks. Don't take that personally. Oh, I won't. I don't take many things personally. <laughs> um, Hey, the way I see it is um, it pays my, they both pay my bills. Excellent. And it's got me a lot easier to um, integrate back into the community. No doubt. Because that was one of the biggest things that I thought I was going to have a problem with was going from everyday hardcore mission and having a mission each day to who knows when it is up. Sure. <laughs> um, Absolutely. But by starting at Starbucks is actually how I got involved with Soldier Solutions. Really? I was working there and another Marine veteran and another guy, I don't remember who it was, were standing outside of my store. And I was like, what are you guys doing out here? And they told me, and he said he was a Marine veteran. I was like, hey, can I go volunteer? That's awesome. Next thing you know, here I am two years later. You know what makes the pumpkin spice latte better? Me making it? No, pouring it out and filling the cup with bourbon instead. But anyway, all right, so 12 years, why'd you go in? Um, they told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> awesome. Um, I wrestled on a high school wrestling team. I was one of the only females on the team. Got told a lot of negative, negative things there. Um, I wanted to join the military. I figured eventually I'd pay for school, not really knowing what I'd be getting into. Uh, we hadn't, we had just, or we had not quite gone into Iraq yet um, when I enlisted. But again, not really being a big history buff, didn't even know what that would mean. Sure. Uh, didn't know what joining the military really meant because nobody in my family really had those kind of stories to tell. Yeah. Um, you know, people can sit there and tell you, hey, you know what you got yourself into. You knew you were going to war because we joined in 2003. Yeah, we could believe that all day long, but at the end of the day, you really didn't know what the hell that meant. Unless you had family that was there, you had friends that were there. Um, little did I know, you know, 15 years later, some of those bonds I made out there would still be my best friends today. No doubt. Um, you know, definitely very interesting. You, know, you want to talk about funny stories, like you asked me earlier. I remember being in Iraq, it was my third deployment, I think. And my buddy and I decided that we wanted to stay out where the um, recreation hall was past the time the buses ran. So we thought in our infinite wisdom, we were gonna run across the flight line. Run across the flight line we did in the snow. Cause you know, oh, you're in the desert, it doesn't snow. No, it snows, it's cold. And it makes it feel like you're back in New England again. Cause that's how <laughs> cold it is. Another funny story was being on the range at home, um, shooting for qualification in the snow. Oh, geez. Because we thought that was a good idea. Um, and a sad but kind of funny story as well is my grandmother passed away while I was serving. And I knew that she wasn't doing well, but, you know, what are you going to do? You know, I don't want her to be suffering anymore. But they, we were on the range when she passed away. And they called me to tell me. And I called my boss and they're like, hey, you know, grandma passed away. I don't know when the funeral's. And he goes, he looks at me, are you, he goes, you can be able to shoot? I said, I'm a Marine, right? And he was like, all right. So, you know, get up, go shoot until it's time for the funeral. That was um, definitely pretty interesting. I won't say it's necessarily funny, but kind of like the ironic sure. of mission and family kind of all at the same time. Well, My, it's, it's something that I think a lot of people don't think about, right? People who, who many of us who have never served in the military don't think about what you miss out on. And it's, it's the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, those times of joy and those times of pain. How do you process that when you're over? Um, it's the good, it's the bad all at the same time. Um, my, one of my bosses once told me, he said, know what you know, know what you don't know, and know how to differentiate. And he told me that very, very earlier in my career. And, you know, 14 years later, it still sits in my head. You know, I didn't join the military thinking it was going to be easy, and easy it was not. 
Yeah. Um, the getting out part, everyone's like, oh, I'm gonna get out and da da da. It's not that easy. Um, what I found worked for me was just getting involved yep. um, to try to find that purpose because I once had one. And you know, you, you get out and you're like, man, I can do all these things. And as much as I wasn't ready to get out necessarily, I was kind of a good time in my life. You know, I was 30 years old, still young and impressionable. Um, my came home, my sis, my baby sister was pregnant with my first nephew. Awesome. Um, I'm getting ready to graduate college. That's awesome. And my second nephew's on the way. You know, all stuff I perhaps would have missed. Yeah. So like, when you talk about bad days, bad day was obviously finding out when my grandmother was going to pass away. Right. Um, was the day I realized I was going to lose my career. That was pretty bad. But everything happens for a reason. And everything that I've done in my life has been through adversity. You know, it was perseverance through adversity. It's been my, 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 you know, what I've said pretty much my whole career, my whole life. And when I think of how bad things can get sometimes, I realize I'm still alive, I'm still breathing. It's a lot more that I can say for some people out there, you know? Um, so that's definitely this company. I've been with them since maybe six months after we started. A lot longer than I think all the guys actually that you've already spoke to yeah. today. <laughs> and it was a rigmarole. Love my boss to death. <laughs> but he saw me at my worst days as a civilian and he has seen me at some of my best days <laughs> as a civilian. So and I have to appreciate him for that. Because he's the kind of guy where if you're having a bad day and you take it out on him, he's probably going to be the one handing you the whiskey and be like, you need one of these? <laughs> or coffee or whatever, you know, choose your poison. Yeah. To all those people who said you couldn't do it, what do you tell them now? Well, other than F you, other than that, um, I would say thank you. I'm going to say thank you. Because you didn't believe in me, made me strong enough to believe in myself and know that I could do it. Not to mention I had a strong family too and anytime I would get down on myself, they were there to tell me that I could do it no matter what the situation was. Kelly, we live in a society where the role models that are out there are the Kardashians of the world. And I look at women like you and I believe that you are the epitome of what a role model to young people, men and women should be. I appreciate that. Which is someone who says, screw what society tells me I can and can't do. I'm gonna show you what I'm really made out of. And I think that we need a billion women like you to show young ladies that it's not about duck faces and makeup, it's about finding yourself and helping others. And so a cheers to you and thank to you. your service. Guys, thank you for hitting the share button on this video. These are the heroes of society. These are the role models that we need to tell all of America and the world about because these are the ones who are out there making a difference. So I'm just one of many. God bless you all. God bless America. Thanks.